But I was thinking, whereas there are some books where they, they stress the three days and three nights, whereas a lot of maybe Amadis who haven't heard your tape... Yes, I understand now. <coughs> I know the difficulty. <coughs> what I meant... Now, that, was, that is another area completely which I didn't touch upon recent, now. Another very important point which I raised was that uh, it is commonly understood that Jonah remained in the belly of fish for three days and three nights and Ahmadis also have been using this argument in favor of Jesus' delivery from cross. They say that as Jonah remained for three days and three nights in the belly of fish, so also Jesus was to be in the belly of earth as Jonah remained alive despite the fact that normally a person should have died much earlier than three days in the belly of fish. So also it was a prophecy applicable to Jesus Christ that he would remain within the belly of earth and still come out whole. Now, I pointed out that Jonah did not remain in the belly of fish for three days and three nights, nor did Jesus Christ for that matter. So, accepting one myth, you lead yourself into another difficulty. While if a Christian turns back to you and say, actually, Jesus did not remain in the belly of earth for that, that period, then you will start counting the period of the time when he was crucified initially and then he was taken down and also kept for a while and then remained uh, injured or, you know, under the, um, you know, wouldn't remain in, in the state of, uh, let, let, let's say, no, no, while he was wounded, that injury continued seriously, let's say, for a while. So counting all this period where the injury could result into serious consequences, we say it is three days and three nights. So why to enter that involved argument at all? If there was a truth in this, the Holy Quran must have mentioned it. The Holy Quran, the style of the Holy Quran, as uh, I have understood it in comparison to the biblical stories, is that when it broaches upon the same subject as Old or New Testament have already discussed, then it is always, uh, it always adopts a certain attitude. Very clearly and without fail, it is always the same attitude. It takes that part of the statement which is correct. It rejects all those parts which uh, are incorrect or unnatural. And it improves upon certain parts of the statement and then makes them more logical, more understandable, so that we know that it is this which God must have said before, which was distorted and misreported later on. Now this is the Quranic style applicable to all such cases where a biblical statement has been incorporated in the Holy Quran partly or fully, always with these, uh, 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 let's say, corrective measures. In this case, Jonah is supposed to have remained in the belly of fish for three days and three nights according to the biblical report. Now, this uh, claim of the Bible is completely ignored by the Quran. It is not even rectified. You see? So, this falls into the category of those statements which are totally rejected. So, a statement rejected by the Holy Quran must have been rejected for, with some purpose. Why should we adopt it? Now, I know, for the sake of argument, sometimes uh, during a debate, one takes up such arguments as well, which are binding on your opponent, with which you may not agree yourself. But because they are binding on your uh, your uh, opponent, so in uh, the in logic this is acceptable. That quote to the, your opponent his own belief and then corner him. Hazrat Masih Maud has also adopted this policy. 
the Holy Quran also has adopted this policy uh, I mean not the Quran but the Quran has reported this policy to have, have been adopted by earlier prophets like Hazrat Abraham when he debated the issue of uh, who broke the uh, I mean who destroyed and demolished the idols he to put himself into their position and asked you know you know their gods they should know so ask this uh, the eldest and the most, the biggest of, of, of the idols he should he must have broken he must have destroyed the others now this was a logical attitude it was not an attitude which depicted Abraham's own beliefs at all he did not believe in idols that is why he broke them so that is what I mean. Hazrat Masim has also, like Hazrat Abraham and some other prophets, adopted the same uh, strategy during his debates with his opponents. I have noticed this many times in the study of those debates. But those Ahmadis who do not understand these things, and sometimes the opponents who do not understand these things, they say, look here, Hazrat Masim said this, so that must have been his belief. It is not true. Even the Holy Quran has used these tactics against uh, the belief of Christians that Jesus Christ must have been literal son of God because he had no father. The same Christians believe that Adam was without father and mother. So when the Holy Quran used this argument against them, it did not mean at all that God is declaring that Adam was born out of nothing without a father or without a mother. So some Muslim scholars who have misunderstood it find themselves in, in great difficulty. And earlier they used to actually believe that Adam had no father and no, no mother. But nowadays when in the period of uh, scientific light they can't accept this view and they find themselves in great difficulty. What they fail to understand is this is an, a, an, a, an instrument of logic used against your opponent and the principle is that if he believes, the, your opponent believes in something which is false, you can use that belief against him as if it were correct and prove the stupidity of the, that situation. So that is how some Ahmadis have also been using this argument and I told them that uh, now you should better use some more caution because if Christians begin to uh, rebut you by declaring that uh, according to the Bible he did not remain for three days and nights in the valley, what would you, your answer be? You understand the whole point now? Thank you. Thank you. Clear.